I call myself Winston the Hornsmith from Karaku. For the past um, 40 something years, I was known as Winston the Washing Machine Man, meaning I repair appliances, washers, dryers, dishwashers. Um, recently, in the past maybe four, three and a half, four years, I went back to an old craft called hornsmithing. I make things out of cow's horn, mostly birds. Birds are my favorite. I make birds, boats, whales, uh, and so on. But late, lately, I've been. I discovered that it's great therapy for me working on the with the horns. Now I tell my friends I want to be known as Winston the Hornsmith instead of Winston the Washing Machine Man. This one, it looks like a bird, but it's still, it's still far from finished. I have to add some more embellishments and I have to put the eyes on. Uh, you know, little more details. This is hollow, almost almost the whole of the horn is hollow. Maybe it's, it's up to about here. Now this horn, if I have to use this horn for a bird, this would have to get a, a little tiny head because there isn't enough material at the end here to, to get a head like this. See, uh, this one here, this is hollow, maybe up to, if you look, you can see the hollow ends just ab about here. So then, that's why I'm able to get such a long beak. Oh, you can see this one here. It's solid only here. So I'll have to get a very tiny he head. So this would not be very good to make a, a head like this. Also, the thickness of the horn too. This, you can see this is very thin. You can see the thickness here is very thin. This will be very easy to work with. Sometimes I don't like it too easy. I like the challenge more. Now this, this is very thick. Even some of them, the wings, this, this will be the wing, it's not quite finished. You can see the thickness of it compared to that one. Some of the wings are so thick that I have to gouge out all the material sometimes here is this thick. What about the coloration? How do you uh, get the various colorations in the uh, birds? Well, the whole horn, the, the, the horn is na natural. I don't use any kind of coloring. If there is any, if there is any, um, this one here you see, you see a little tint somewhat of a tint here that is from 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 the flame I use a I use a flame to to do any kind of any kind of bending I have to do it has to be heated up so I use it I use a flame on it so sometimes the flame the flame would burn it somewhat like here and this was this was completely burnt at one one time and then I scrape out all the burn and it's left with this slight coloration but um, the rest of the the rest of the horn is untouched I don't use any kind of uh, paint or anything like that the color is natural did you develop uh, your technique and style and uh, 
yourself or did you have some inspiration uh, of other hornsmith or are you the only hornsmith there is? Well, someone asked me that before. <laughs> and I told them in, in my whole life, I, I, knew, I knew only two hornsmiths. But they died, they both died over 50 years ago, so. So the, my, my, my style just, I guess, my style evolved over the years. And, um, well, put it this way, I, I, I learned as I went along, you know. And as I, I try this and try that, um, trial and error, you would say. And time-wise, it's very, it's very time-consuming. Um, most of the most of the time is spent on uh, clean, uh, cleaning, you no know, scraping. Sanding, oh, I'm sorry. polishing. Uh, so that's what they, it takes most of the time. Um, sometimes also, um, there are a few of them that I uh, that got broken accidentally. Sometimes in bending, in bending the wing, I would bend it too much. It would just snap off. Is that the end of it at that point? Mm, most of the time is the end of it. Now, I used to find a way of reattaching a wing if it should break off. One day I had this bird, and the wing snapped off. And uh, so I decided to to reattach the wing, but then I said to myself, well, why should I reattach the wing? What's wrong with a, a bird with one wing? You know? There are a few people out there walking around with one leg or one arm, you know, and that doesn't make them less a person. So the bird is there with one wing. And it looks nice with one wing too. What is your plans for your art? Well, well, I really have no particular plans in that sense, other than doing it as therapy. It, you know, it's great therapy for me, and um, It's a, it's a, this, is a, this is the first thing I'm doing in my whole life that I really like, I mean, I really enjoy doing. Sometimes people would think I'm, something is wrong with my, my, my head. If they see me um, just admiring the birds. And what I like about them, about the birds, is that they all have their own personality. And I don't, I don't plan beforehand how they would look. If they, if they come out a certain way, they look a certain way, it was just um, coincidental. Every single one that I start, it feels like it's the very first one I'm doing. I mean, I might have done about, I have done at least, I have made at least, over the years, um, I have made at least 150. And then you might say, well, oh, this guy made so many of these birds. Maybe when he's making, making one, he just, he takes the horn, takes the horn, he goes zip, 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 zip and it breezes right through the horn without even thinking. It doesn't work that way. I thought, I thought one day it would, it would be like that, but 
every time I pick up a, a, a horn and I decided to decide to make a bird it feels like it's the very first one it feels like I've never made one before maybe that's why I enjoy doing it you know Can we expect that uh, at some point maybe to see your work in uh, galleries uh, on exhibit? Well, when when people look at my birds and it's pleasing to them, that makes me feel good. Therefore. The more people seeing the birds, that is what I would like to see. Because when they when they when they when they appreciate it and makes them feel good, makes me feel good too. So it would be nice to see more people seeing the birds. So yes, I would like to see them. In, 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 in galleries anywhere on the sidewalks people's homes wherever mm -hmm. and, and you know there's a, a there's a little story i like to tell about the birds one day i had a I, I I I go on the street. I go to street fairs and flea markets, and I had a few. I put a few of them out in a glass case. So I had a, a few of them in a glass case, and uh, people walk by and they admire them. Like, wow! And then this particular lady walked by. And she saw, oh, in the, in the in the box that uh, brought the birds in, there was also a, a a plain horn in the box, a dirty horn. I mean, actually had um, dust on it. A plain horn like this. The only thing is, was is this this is pretty clean. I cleaned this one out, but that other horn had actually had dust and little bits of mud on it. Uh, I, I forgot it on the table in front of the case with the other birds, the birds that are already made. And this lady walked by and she picked the horn, the dirty horn up. And she said to me, she says, pointing to, to the birds, she said, you, you messed up a beautiful horn like this? So she didn't see anything she didn't see any beauty in the in the in the in the birds, but she saw great beauty in the plain dirty horn. So I wanted to write on the so I wrote a note on the and I put, stuck it on the case with the birds. I f I wanted to write um the messing up of the horn. But I said no no that sounds crude so I wrote instead presenting the artistic distortion of the horn so and I have distortion in quotes so you see some people see not everybody sees beauty in the birds they see beauty in the plain old dirty horn but, but you know what they say about beauty anyway. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, that's it.